Hello everybody, it is Badger Wild, and we are back with another Space Engineers video where I talk about some tips and everything, and uh, we have a bunch of new subscribers. Uh, the last video did amazing. You guys really like the gimbaled gun, so I thought I would push the process a little bit more, make sure it was viable, or see how far I could push it. If you're hearing the thuds right now, you're hearing some clangs going on. So if you guys do enjoy this content, be sure to hit the like button. And if you're new to the channel, subscribe. It helps me out a lot, pushes me up in the algorithm, and uh, helps grow the channel, which is something I'm trying to work on right now. Currently, we're trying to get to 1,500 subscribers. And we're almost about a one-fifth of the... We're over one-fifth of the way there. So you guys are amazing. Anyway, <clears throat> back to what I'm talking about today. This week... I took the gimbaled guns concept and went absolutely insane with it. Yes, this is for independently gimbaled guns, and I am severely testing the limits of clang right now. <laughs> this thing has rocket launchers on it. I, I will probably make a more functional version of this later. It does have a quirk that I will mention that causes a whole lot of problems. Uh, it depends on how you want to use the gimbaled arms, if you want to use them or not. So, <clears throat> what, what have I done here? I've basically tilted some guns and given this entire system the ability to independently target each one of its guns. Now, this works at first, but it becomes apparent why you don't put two hinges on a gimbaled gun. And uh, that'll become apparent as I start going over here and attacking some of these targets I have set up, which are just a couple of batteries over in this direction. You can probably see the three of them. So without further ado, let's hop inside this bad boy. Now, if you guys want this thing, I am currently skinning it. Uh, if you guys want to play with it, you can. We have a couple of buttons here. One, we've got our individual turrets. You see we got a pretty good shot spread. Don't ask me how I got that fire rate because it just happened for some reason. I don't know. We've also got rockets. You can see I don't have any kind of deal with those, but they spread pretty nice. We also have turret focus fire. Someone told me in the comments, I, I don't remember who it was, because the last video had so many comments, I could not find the comment that I was looking for uh, in time for this video. Uh, whoever it is, I will put your name in the comment and thank you for it. They said to utilize this, and what it does is it focuses all the turrets onto a target, which uses maximum range of the tar of the guns. So without further ado, let's go ahead and show you what this bad boy can do. What we're going to do is I'm going to go in from uh, this one mode here, and we're going to lock on... Focus fire. Now, this thing appears to work pretty good. Woo! Almost hit that. Now, as you can see here, we, we hit that thing and we annihilated it very quickly. And that seems like a great thing, you know, annihilating it very fast. But something I've noticed... Trying to turn... The turrets on a strafe will not engage. So, what is happening? <clears throat> the turrets are kind of strafing upward, and they're trying to engage a different target. Right now, uh, with the target stationary, it, it's actually pretty well stable. So, when your target is in a moment, is, is it worthless? No, it's not. But what's happening here is, as I'm moving around the target, there is no way I can hit it. Not like this. But if I bring this thing down here and focus fire, it's pretty much done in seconds. And yeah, it, it, it doesn't take a whole lot of time. The problem is getting this thing to focus, lock onto targets, and be able to take them out. I can turn it this way. And at least one gun is going to be firing at it. That's also another problem with this uh, gimbal makeup. You kind of almost have to be aiming anyway to make it affordable. 
or to make it work. And the problem is when you turn, <clears throat> you have all sorts of other problems. I will probably, when I put this up on the workshop, I will probably take the gimbals off of it. Uh, if you guys want the gimbaled version, I'll make two of them. I'll make a blue gimbaled version and a red non-gimbaled version, and I'll just double up the guns on it so it has a, a ridiculous level of firepower pointing at the enemy. And uh, you guys can take this thing and play with it once I get the skin done on it. But <clears throat> in reality, why, why does this not help uh, the ship? And the reason it doesn't help is the turrets in Space Engineers do not fire at where your ship, your enemy is going, they fire in somewhat of a direction of where your enemy's at. And that's why uh, one particular strategy to beating other ships, especially missiles, is to do what's called lazy looping, where you just tap the, <clears throat> you press up onto the space bar and you go upward, just straight vertically upward. And you just start tilting your ship with either Q or you start tilting it with E. Oh boy, we are probably about to hit something. What am I about to hit? I forgot there were asteroids. <laughs> okay, we're not going to hit that. But <clears throat> this is what <clears throat> helps you dodge turrets a lot of times. You'd be amazed at how much flack you can dodge by pulling off this one simple maneuver. Uh, Hydro Man can easily dodge stuff because he hits, once you hit 110. Uh, meters per second you're doing pretty good so in this ship it can turn it can engage it can outmaneuver uh, but the problem is the gimbal turrets are doing the same thing that a regular turret is doing and that's what you use the lazy loop for to get around it uh, if any of y'all know how effective the lazy loop is just ask it brocked the cons introduced the lazy loop and they they dominated a server so what works best which is have the gimbal guns only have a singular point of turn. In this case, just a height, just a, a turn radius on the horizontal plane. And what this means is as this ship, let me grab onto it here. As this thing turns, it's because the, the vertical axis of the turret or azimuth doesn't exist. It is completely dependent on the ship moving forward, and I think this is probably the best version. Uh, I wanted to test this out and make sure that I couldn't make this better, and this appears to be the best way to do it. So, <clears throat> what happens with this and makes it superior to this quad monster that I've this clawing monster pod that I have here is with the two guns on the bottom begin targeting when when they get into position, the other four guns will then turn in and focus fire. What does this mean? I think it means that with this, you have a higher probability of hitting a target, especially if you're going in for a strafe. Uh, with a fixed gun in the middle, you are going to guarantee that one fixed gun hit. But with these extra guns on the side, you're going to guarantee extra hits, and this is going to add more DPS to your attack every time you hit. This is basically a DPS situation where I'm trying to increase the DPS. Uh, it means that wings are going to be a meta, probably. I've had people tell me that this gimbal turret, gimbal to guns are probably going to be a meta. Uh, it means winged ships are going to be meta very soon. And <clears throat> there is a thing with ships now where... I believe you can hit them with a cannon and if there's a significant enough of an angle and you've got good heavy armor you will basically deflect it would be the F302 that I built it works pretty good now not as a, a gimbal turret but if you look at the difference in wing design here <clears throat> and that's what this video is about the possible new meta that may come up from this this wing design is forward-facing whereas this one is slanted if you were to armor these wing plates like the nose section of this and the, I believe the engine section is also heavy armor. It's not a lot of armor, but it's just enough to make the F-302 a little bit more dangerous. The F-302, mind you, can take a ton of punishment. I've had this thing take both of its main engine pods completely out and it still just keeps fighting. With just the two guns, it's actually pretty effective. Um, if I were to straighten up the wings on this, 
and put hinge mounted uh, guns on this, it would be effective. I am thinking about doing a hinge mounted uh, atmosphere to space type fighter, which may work out. But yeah, of these three fighters, with the combination of a good wing system and the gimbal guns, you could create a pretty powerful monster. I'm not going to lie. I, I think you could create a, a monster that could be mean as F and just start destroying other ships and stuff. Another thing about this is you can put these gimbal turrets anywhere. Uh, you can mount one on the nose. Uh, you can mount them on the sides of your ship, your fuselage here. Mount them on the wing tips. As long as these guns are focusing in. And like I said, this is me taking it to the final level. And the problem is with this, it just doesn't... It When you do the strafe, it doesn't work. When you're doing a, a flyby strafe with this or a fixed gunship, you are going to have a better chance of hitting because you don't have that other, that azimuth variable. You're controlling the azimuth variable. So all of this is doing is taking more guns and focusing them onto the target where this one can't. This one has two guns that have to focus on the target, and this one here has, well, it's got two guns that focus, or two guns that are forward-facing, but it's got four more guns that focus fire onto the target and can just shred it. And y'all saw this thing just shred a drone. It doesn't take very much. The moment you get a lock-on, it is going to hurt something. And that is before adding a the trick of the, uh, what was it, focus fire on this thing. But I don't know if it's because this is so unstable, because it's still wiggling a bit. I mean, even the F-302 has several hinges on it, and it does not wiggle that much. It's a pretty stable ship to make it look like that. But, <clears throat> like I said, this means wings are going to become more prevalent. You are going to need that wing, uh, and you're probably not going to need like a big wing. You're just going to need a wing for hard points. And hard points on a, a built ship now are going to become a thing. Running your pipes through the ship wing to hit target zones so that you can set up your gimbal turrets. That's going to become a thing too. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this. <laughs> uh, checking this out. Yeah, like I said, I, I took the turret thing to the, the ultimate level. You can see the three, the progression here. And I would say the middle point ship would probably be the most powerful. Uh, I'll have to build a custom ship, and I am I am really going to look into building a very vicious custom ship to tear in, possibly to be a interceptor replacement for the F-302. As I'll still use the F-302 in videos. We'll still make that thing because it's still pretty good. I'm going to have to figure out how to increase the fire rate on firepower on this thing. And that, that might be a way of doing it. That or I'll add some bigger guns or some nonsense like that. But yeah, like I said, that, that one extra hinge to give it an azimuth. When you make that strafe, if you are moving side to side on the, with this thing, or even just coming in at a shallow angle, it's going to try and fire off at where the target is rather than where it's going. And as the Marine Corps says, good, guy, good shooters shoot where the enemy is, great shooters shoot where the enemy is going to be. And if you can't control where the bullets are going to be, you can't make the enemy run into the bullets. And that's what you're basically trying to do. You're trying to make your armatures throw your armatures out there in a predicted fashion so that your enemy runs into them. And this just allows that to happen much more efficiently. Anyway, folks, <clears throat> I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I was a little all over the place in it, I think. Uh, but, like I said, I wanted to take this thing to its to the final conclusion and make sure that, that, the, that there was not a better version of the gimbal turret, and I don't think that there is. Um, this seems to be the best way to do it, and I think think this may become a dogfighting meta. I am going to eventually build a drone that uses this concept because this is the springboard concept since I've proven this concept works. This is going to be the springboard to building a drone that can effectively counter Aaron's railgun drone. 
so that may be a video later if I can figure out how <clears throat> if I can find Aaron's railgun drum which I think he put it on the shop I'm gonna build something that will be able to challenge and possibly even beat it in a head-to-head -head fight meaning you can turn something loose and tear it apart this is why it's called space engineers folks okay if your enemy throws a whole bunch of drones with rail guns on them you just build something that can kill the rail gun drone anyway hope you guys enjoyed the video as always remember to like comment and subscribe i am badger wild signing out